Wow, a calm and relaxing forest to explore. It's weirdly empty though. You'd think there'd be some kind of like normal sized animals in here. Holy shit. It's time to give the player some fierce competition. And what's the first thing that comes to mind when you think of fierce? Snails. I drew one up and threw it in the game. Weird. It's not doing anything. But after slapping some animations and a teensy bit of code, whoa, he's waddling. But wait, remember the forest scene from the start of the video? Yeah, we actually haven't made that yet, so before we make any more enemies, it's time to get level designing. To do that, we need to draw some more tile sets. Now, I'm not much of an artist, so this is what I made. And now we can sprinkle them in. But first we need to make a terrain, and this isn't a terrain like the ground you're on. In Godot, a terrain is kind of like telling the game which textures connect so that you can have this as opposed to this. There are a few ways you can tell the game to connect these textures, but one of the easiest is to connect them based on a secret layer you paint on top that the player never sees. Let's get world building! I've got the basic shapes in the ground, but we need to make it a forest. Wait, what's even in a forest? Huh. Trees? Grass? Bushes? Sounds made up. So I made a bush terrain and a tree trunk terrain and I made some trees that the player can jump around on or whatever people do in forests. And with the terrain down I have to stop procrastinating programming and get back to enemy construction. We've got a snail so let's make an even smaller thing big and make a fly. The fly is going to buzz around randomly within a range of its home point and when a player enters its attack range it'll swoop them. I'm trying to lay eggs on you or something? I don't know. But flies do it, and it's annoying, so I feel like it could be a good attack. The random movement is easy. We just need to choose a random point to go to, make it go towards that point, and then give it a new random point once it gets close to the first one, and then repeat. The swooping is the real problem. We want the fly to move in an arc, from its position to the player's position to some end position. The end position is arbitrary, but I wanted to make it the same position as the start, but on the opposite side of the player. So, theoretically, we could achieve this by taking a snapshot of all the points, calculating the end point and then using a bezier to lurk between these three points. And if you don't know what those words mean, don't worry, I just made them up. No need to worry your sweet little head. But I also said theoretically because I could never get this to work. I wasn't sure why, but if I made the final position the home point of the fly instead, it would work. I think this had to do with how the fly decides whether to attack or not but I actually like this effect more, so I've decided to keep it this way. Also, if you do want to learn about Beziers, there is an amazing video you can go watch. It's linked in the description and explains them really well, but basically they're just a way of smoothly moving between points. They're super useful in everything from physics to video editing. So we've got two enemies, but they always say the best things come in three, so we've got to shoehorn in one more enemy. I'm sure just like me, you're tired of code, which is good because this enemy isn't gonna take too much. It's just gonna walk around like the snail, but jump around as well. So what is it? A teeny tiny cute little huge mouse. The hardest part of making this enemy was tweaking its speed and jump. Too fast and it knocks out the player before they can react, but too slow and it just looks goofy. It has some odd behavior which I really can't explain, but I think it's funny, so I've decided to keep it in. And if you've got any complaints, be sure to send them to my email. Just know that I'll read it, but I might not have the time to respond. No, but if you actually do have any advice, you should join my Discord server. It's new and awesome, and you should join. I'll just post about when I upload videos and release some builds for you guys to test. We've got all the building blocks for our forest well, we just need to put them in place. And level design. That's the quickest and easiest part about making games. That's what everyone says, right? <laughs> well, um... Apparently not. I made a world, but it's really just random trees and branches with no purpose. And the scale is terrible. But it's a pretty good demo. But this is also only one room, and there's still a big tree I want the player to climb and a small hut I want to add in. But that's just more art, so we'll worry about that later. While playing, I also realized I need to make this place a lot longer by chucking in a couple more bigger rooms. And then we should have a cool level. 
Having the terrain made it really easy to block out worlds, but what really took time was setting up all the colliders. And there's probably a better way to do it, and I should probably look into that, but I won't. Wow, the world is ours. But wait, what about that big snail at the start of the video? Am I fixing up the boss fight and making a giant snail for the player to battle with cool slimy moves? <laughs> no. What? Why would you think that? That was obviously clickbait. And you fell for it? Good one. I am working on a boss fight, but I think it's actually going to be a big frog. I've got some concepts working in my head, and if you want to see some more behind the scenes stuff and more frequent updates, follow me on Twitter. And there definitely wasn't another enemy I added. Don't try and find it, it was being removed off the face of the earth. Oh, and also subscribe.